Welcome to today's reflective act of worship from Newcastle Cathedral. We hope you will find it helpful as we gather today, from many different places, yet one in faith and hope. As God's people we have gathered. Let us worship God together. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe place, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. Let us pray. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today. The Gospel according to Luke, chapter 5. One day, while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby. They had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Just then, some men came, carrying a paralysed man on a bed. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But, finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven you. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, Who is this who is speaking blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their questionings, he answered them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who is paralysed, I say to you, stand up and take your bed and go to your home. Immediately he stood up before them, took what he had been lying on and went to his home, glorifying God. Amazement seized all of them, and they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen strange things today. Remembering that the Word of God is living and active, let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of Scripture. Today's reflection is offered by Canon Claire McLaren. Well, hello again. We've been working our way through Matthew's Gospel in these daily reflections, but today, for some reason unknown to me, we're jumped on to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5. Luke is well known for having a particular interest in sharing the stories of Jesus' healing miracles. And this story is no exception. But also at this point in his gospel, he is sharing with us a number of tales of how Jesus 
identity is questioned by other people, his authority is challenged, and he invites us as his readers to think, who is this man? So today, quite a gathering has assembled around Jesus to listen to him teaching. Luke might be exaggerating slightly when he says that Pharisees and scribes, uh, teachers of the law from every village in Galilee, Judea and even Jerusalem had gathered in the house where Jesus was, unless it was a very, very large house. But certainly there was quite a crowd. And then this poor paralysed man with his lovely friends suddenly appears from the ceiling where the tiles have been removed and he's been lowered down on his stretcher as his friends faithfully trust that God will heal him of his paralysis. And Jesus turns to the man with these wonderful words, friend, your sins are forgiven you. Isn't it lovely that he starts with words of affirmation and affection? Even though he's never met the man before, he calls him friend. He says, enter into relationship with me. Your sins are forgiven you. A strange thing to say to a man who's paralysed and who's come to be healed. But in the ancient world, it was often understood that sickness was sent as a punishment from God to those who had sinned. Of course, the scribes and the Pharisees listening would have found this a threatening statement from Jesus. Effectively, he was taking on the role of the priestly class, whose task it was in the temple to receive sacrifices, to hear those who came wanting to repent of their sins, and then to pronounce God's forgiveness upon them. What right did Jesus have to say such a thing? But I think Jesus is trying to broaden this out. Their response, who does he think he is, is met by Jesus with an equally bold counter response. He says, It says in the scriptures that the Son of Man has the authority to forgive. This is a reference to the prophecy of Daniel, where the Son of Man comes at the end of time to judge the world with God's authority to do that. Who does he think he is? Well, this is who I'm claiming to be says Jesus. And then he says, what is more impossible? To heal a man or to forgive his sins? This man's paralysis might have been understood in those days as a punishment from God. In more recent generations, perhaps though, our understanding of what can paralyse us has been broadened out. Psychologists and psychiatrists have actually given examples of cases where people have been physically paralysed by a sense of guilt, where they haven't been able to forgive themselves or feel themselves forgiven. And that has evidenced itself in physical symptoms. But even in a more psychological sense, We still use that phrase to be paralysed by guilt, don't we? Perhaps we've fallen out with someone and we know that it's our fault, but we feel paralysed to do anything because we can't find the courage to go and apologise or the right words to try and make things right. In another and far more painful sense, some people have been left with such a sense of shame by abuse of others or being told that they are worthless and bad, that they too are paralysed and need a huge amount of counselling and therapy to enable them to move beyond that blockage, that lack of self-worth in order to be able to move on in their lives. 
So many of us need to hear those words from Jesus. Friend, your sins are forgiven, don't we? And he says, because it's not just about performing miracles, but it's about changing understandings. He says, what is more impossible? To heal a man? Or to change our understanding of God? To move from a sense of God as some fierce judge sending punishments to us because we have done wrong? Towards a fresh understanding of God as one who is unconditionally loving and has already forgiven even you. Who is this man? He is one who opens our eyes to a new way of understanding our relationship with God as one of deep and loving friendship and as one who has already forgiven our sins so that we might forgive ourselves. Amen. Take a moment, press pause if you want, to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection. Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. Lord Jesus, as we give thanks in this week, for the first COVID-19 vaccinations and for the knowledge and skill of scientists and medics which has made this hope possible. With the crowds in today's Gospel reading, we come celebrating that the power to heal sickness is with you. We continue to pray for those who suffer most at the hands of the virus and for other people whose treatment for other illnesses continues to be delayed. For each and all, we pray, Lord, an awareness of your near presence beside them, and with those who care for them, strengthening and upholding all, we pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, as we rejoice in the faith of those friends who dismantled a roof to bring the one they cared for close to you, we pray for the church. Help our life together to not be so tightly defined that it confines people who are in and keeps others out. May our buildings, our fellowship, and our care be opened out afresh at this Advent time to all who seek you, so that all who seek you may find you, and all who are lost may be found. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you already know what we are thinking that you know all of the secrets of our hearts intimately. We thank you that our every sin is already forgiven in your heart and our every hope cherished there also. As the light of your hope dawns upon us again this Advent, we hold before you the darker things of our lives and of the lives of those we care for. We bring all that is a struggle and the many things for which we seek direction into your light and sight. Praying that we may be ever more aware of your going ahead of us on the road in all of life's journey. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, 
purify our hearts and minds, that when your Son Jesus Christ comes again as Judge and Saviour, we may be ready to receive him, who is our Lord and our God. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, as our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Sustainer, be with you this day and always. Amen. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God, this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Now that our choirs have returned to sing in the cathedral, the format of our daily reflections has changed. On Thursdays and Fridays, a short reflection and prayers will be offered in the context of a service of choral evensong, which you can follow here on YouTube at 5.30pm or watch at your convenience later. Monday to Wednesday's reflections will remain the same. We hope and pray that you will continue to find them helpful. <laughs>